let's talk about the party, the big one that's already going on and who else to bring on. But the legend, Michael Singh, he's the best when it comes to covering TFC Canada as well. Reporter for the parlay right now, giving you TFC coverage every single day, as well as the Canadian national team and was in the building at BMO Field on Sunday afternoon for what is now at this point, Michael, I think the all time great Canadian soccer party in history. (laughs) <laughs> definitely up there and you're le- using the uh the legend term very loosely there guys but i appreciate it um yeah man that that was wild uh on sunday i had to it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity honestly so i had to put my seat in the press box and just yes. embrace the atmosphere within the supporters group and i can't i don't know if it's really set in yet um, but I can't really describe how special that atmosphere was. It wasn't just the supporters either. It was the whole stadium that was into it. And it was, it was special to us. So obviously, as you mentioned, the bus arriving, that was, we haven't seen anything like that yet, where so many Canadian supporters arrive an hour and a half before kickoff to welcome the men's national team to the stadium. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the videos that have circulated. It's going to be one of the iconic moments in Canadian soccer history here. Um, The way that they were greeted and the passion of the fan base that came out to support um, more than just the supporters group, as I mentioned before, it was, it was honestly the whole stadium getting into it. So to be part of that was special. And then, you know, you had a little bit of a wait to get into the stadium, which I mean, is, is a right for a moment of this. And then <laughs> you're, you're there before kickoff and even before kickoff, the supporters groups were in full flare. They were chanting their lungs out and they made the environment special. Like I said, before kickoff. And then of course the game, I mean, come on, <laughs> it, it was, it was a party because they went up two nothing in the first half. So the rest of the 45 was just, was just a party and we're living through something. I don't think, any of us would have thought would have happened just a few years ago. So for this to just happen so quickly, you're seeing the kind of ripple effects of, of the casual supporter now being drawn into to what is a really special moment. And I think that's the coolest part about all of this. Um, in terms of what I'm using to gauge it, man, media presence. Mm. I, I've never seen as much media covering this national team or you know, Canada soccer in general than I have during this this last couple of weeks of World Cup qualifying. And I feel like that number just slowly starts to increase and increase and increase as this men's national team kind of inch closer to achieving their goal, which of course was qualifying for the World Cup. So a lot of little different things that I'm using there, but of course the TV metrics kind of speaks volumes to exactly how many people are tuned into this. Uh, you mentioned Oso, he's always first to the drum, I feel like. Was he the one on the drum to, to get that post game? The, the thunderclap going you already know you already know it was <laughs> it was ozo man he uh yeah you got the, the post game thunderclap going mm-hmm. you can just see what this moment kind of meant, meant to him and speaking of ozo in the weeks leading up to it he never wanted to really get ahead of himself and he was really hiding his, his sort of excitement and emotion just to see that come out in that moment it was it was really special Take me into the scene at Explorer Stadium on Sunday. I saw you a bunch of times behind the benches. Um, what was the atmosphere? What was the game like? Sort of what was that whole experience? Unbelievable. I think maybe behind Cincinnati or ahead of Cincinnati, the okay. best home field crowd that the U.S. had had in this World Cup qualifiers. Like, I don't, I don't know if, if it trans. If you guys could sense it on TV, I guess, because the stadium was very loud. But it was since minute zero. The crowd was amazing. And and we have to go back when the the, the, the US MNT played against Canada for Nations League, their last like meaningful uh, game in Orlando. And again, mm-hmm. the crowd responded. I think mm-hmm. Orlando won um, to be, um, uh, I mean, they need to be in the future. Uh, uh, a venue for the USMNT, no matter the rival, because yeah. again, the crowd just responded and it, li- it lifts the team. Because if we go back to the game, the first 10, 15 minutes, you could see a Panama team that was pressing a little bit and you mm-hmm. could sense the nerves and the tension in the air. But then once the crowd, it, the crowd uh, got into the game, you could see the team just, they, they, they just left and, and they lift the team. And it felt and it felt great. And after that, after the first goal, the first penalty kick, it was just a non-stop party. 
Christian, it's it's what we all want from Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's he's the new Captain America. He's the the one that has to take uh, the rope and 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 the cape and then the shield that Landon Donovan or Clint Dempsey and that generation left for him. And I mean, he just had a, an absolute magical night. Um, he was given the armband, which was a surprise mm. to a lot of people. I, I, I was very surprised. And I can tell you that a lot of our guys, Ham, Paul, and all the media people at the stadium were kind of surprised that he was in tighter arms again after what, uh, how he played at Azteca. Mm. But that, that's just another layer. Um, and I think it was a message from Greg Berhalter to Christian Pulisic. It's like, you are the guy, you're Captain America, literally, um, you're going to be Captain America with the armband tonight. And he responded. And I, it was just a magical night. And he deserved it, man. Um, I, I know that maybe media and fans, uh, they, they don't, maybe they're not very comfortable and, and they don't... Um, I'm going to talk about from the media perspective. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not going to give you much when he mm. speaks to the media and he's a very tough nut to crack. Um, if you want to get like a great quote out of him. Um, so, but, but man, it, I, I know that inside the group, he's very loved. He's the leader uh, with, with Tyler Adams um, inside the locker room and other guys, but those two, are the face of this team, and and man, I'm I'm super happy for him. He deserves it, especially the way he started qualifiers, the injuries, uh, the low moments at Chelsea uh, that translated to to the national team, uh, coming from coming off the bench in in several in some games, and and I think it was just the culmination of of something that needed to happen. Christian Pulisic needed to be the guy, the face of the of the World Cup qualification. Uh, the game tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern time, I believe, maybe 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not going to be in Eastern time, so I immediately decided <laughs> to forget how that works. Uh, we'll have the show tomorrow along with Andrew Levy to talk about that one. And then Thursday, Susanna Collins and Charlie Davies 